This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Introduction Not so long ago, if someone had called me a racist, I would have kicked and screamed in protest. But I'm a good person, I would have insisted. I don't see color, I don't have a racist bone in my body. I would have felt insulted and misunderstood and stomped off to lick my wounds. That's because I thought being a racist meant not liking people of color or being a name-calling bigot. For years, I struggled silently to understand race and racism. I had no way to make sense of debates in the media about whether the white guy was, quote-unquote, being a racist or the black guy was, quote-unquote, playing the race card. I wanted close friends of color, but kept ending up with white people as my closest friends. When I was with a person of color, I felt an inexplicable tension and a fear that I might say or do something offensive or embarrassing. When white people made blatantly racist jokes or remarks, I felt upset, but I had no idea what to do or say. I didn't understand why, if laws supporting slavery, segregation, and discrimination had been abolished, lifestyles still looked so different across color lines. Most confusing were unwanted racist thoughts that made me feel like a jerk. I felt too embarrassed to admit any of this, which prevented me from going in search of answers. It turns out, stumbling block number one was that I didn't think I had a race, so I never thought to look within myself for answers. The way I understood it, race was for other people, brown and black-skinned people. Don't get me wrong, if you put a census form in my hand, I would know to check white or Caucasian. It's more that I thought all those other categories like Asian, African American, American Indian, and Latino were the real races. I thought white was the raceless race, just plain, normal, the one against which all others were measured. What I've learned is that thinking myself raceless allowed for a distorted frame of reference built on faulty beliefs. For instance, I used to believe race is all about biological differences. I can help people of color by teaching them to be more like me. Racism is about bigots who make snarky comments and commit intentionally cruel acts against people of color. Culture and ethnicity are only for people of other races and from other countries. If the cause of racial inequity were understood, it would be solved by now. If these beliefs sound familiar to you, you're not alone. I've met hundreds of white people across America who share not only these beliefs, but the same feelings of race-related confusion and anxiety I experienced. This widespread phenomenon of white people wanting to guard themselves against appearing stupid, racist, or radical has resulted in an epidemic of silence from people who care deeply about justice and love for their fellow human beings. I believe most white people would take a stand against racism if only they knew how or even imagined they had a role. In the state that is somewhere between fear and indifference lies an opportunity to awaken to the intuitive voice that says, something's not right. What's going on here? I wish I could make a difference. In my experience, learning to listen to that voice is slowly but surely rewiring my intuition, breaking down walls that kept me from parts of myself, and expanding my capacity to seek truths no matter how painful they may be. Learning about racism has settled inner conflicts and is allowing me to step out of my comfort zone with both strength and vulnerability in all parts of my life. Racism holds all of us captive in ways white people rarely imagine. As my white husband said to me recently, it couldn't have happened to a whiter person. And if I, a middle-aged white woman raised in the suburbs, can wake up to my whiteness, any white person can. Waking up has been an unexpected journey that's required me to dig back into childhood memories to recall when, how, and why I developed such distorted ideas about race, racism, and the dominant culture in which I soaked. Like the memoir by the guy who loses 200 pounds or the woman who overcomes alcohol addiction, my story of transformation is an intimate one. In order to convey racism's ability to shape beliefs, values, behaviors, and ideas, I share personal and often humiliating stories, as well as thoughts I spent decades not admitting, not even to myself. As I unpack my own white experience in the pages ahead, I have no pretense that I speak for all white Americans, not even my four white siblings. 
Never before have I been so keenly aware of how individual our cultural experiences and perspectives are. That said, all Americans live within the context of one dominant culture.